Hello everyone, I'm Cole from the Kingdom, and today we are continuing our review of the Origins in Dragon Age Origins. Today we have the Dwarven Noble. This one's interesting. Before we get into it, uh, we have to talk about the character creator. When you first select a preset, you get a dwarf with a beard and full dwarven cheeks. Then when you change anything, the game sucks your cheeks in all the way. Screw this. This means that if you want to have natural cheeks, you can't edit the presets at all, which sucks, because a lot of their other features do not look great. Okay, I've said my piece. I think of all the origins, this one is definitely the best at setting up the threat of the Darkspawn, and it's best for playing a ruthless character. So if you want to side with the werewolves or Bronca, I think this origin is the best for that. This origin gives you the most personal reason uh, for fighting the Darkspawn and building up your army. And so we start with our second, Gorham, coming in to talk to us. This is a good opening. He organically conveys that we have a feast to go to in celebration to us. He tells us a bit about dwarven politics and nobility. He talks a little about the proving. This is a really good opening. If you're female, this gets even better. You have the option to say you and Gorham are sort of romantically involved, but people don't approve because he's just a warrior. This can add a lot of substance to this origin that you don't get from most others. So we head down the hall and see Rika in our brother Balin's room. So we steal some of his stuff and then talk to her. No one makes a comment about the castless brand on her face, which I think is a missed opportunity for this origin. All we learn is that our brother Balin sometimes has his lady friends over to visit. Next, we have a choice right away. We can choose to go right to the feast instead of talking to the merchants or going to the proving. We would still have to go to the Proving later to talk to Trian and Balin, but it's nice that they give you this choice that actually affects some conversations. But I don't like going right to the feast. Let's go talk to the merchants. Here's where things really open up for roleplaying. You can be a complete spoiled brat in this origin. I don't like choosing these options, but I really, really appreciate having them. It's funny in a satirical way. Obviously, people acting this way is terrible, but this feels like a parody of that. This worm has written a book that slanders my house. Written slander? Imbecile! Slander is spoken! In print, it is libel! Garim, remove this man's head! That said, as a role player, I can't bring myself to be an ass. So I'm nice to everybody. These are my barrels and their contents are mine. Well, we all know the Warden is a kleptomaniac, so this doesn't count. So anyway, we have this conversation with a noble and a scholar. Unlike the conversation with Gorham, which provided information organically, this scholar just spouts some cultural exposition at the Prince of Orzammar. Points off for that. All in all, it's a good conversation and a mini choice to make, and I like it, but it could have been written better. We head down the stairs and talk to Trian and Balin, who is completely trustworthy and whose voice is not annoying at all. So here we are shown that Trian, the next king, is kind of a dick, and not the good kind. Yeah, it's a little over the top, but it does its job of making us think he won't be a great king. Then again, if we're also playing a conceited brat, then... So we then meet some noble hunters, and here is something very interesting. If we take their proposition as a male, there is a consequence later in the game. I don't think any of the other origins have something like this. We can actually come back to Orzammar and find we have a son. I mean, damn. That's good. We assume it's a one-off fling, but then boom, consequences. I'm all for more of this sort of thing in games. Decisions you think are just casual, only to later discover how important they were. Anyway, this interaction is also kind of an exposition dump. Poise points off for that. The next person of note is a weapon salesman who wants us to take his dagger, and that's not a euphemism. He makes it seem like he's being all humble, but Gorham suggests he's giving it to you to drum up business for himself. This is good. Ulterior motives become a thing in a little bit. There's also a magic merchant who faints if we talk to him. That's probably for the best. So we go to the proving, but honestly, I don't really care about it. Though I do appreciate that we are given the option to watch or compete. Again, this is a choice they didn't need to give us, but I'm glad they did. While we're watching, we can talk to a guy who trains Proving Fighters. He tells us about how a castless impersonated a Proving Fighter and bested some of Orzammar's best fighters. That's a neat inclusion. 
So moving on to the feast, we can talk to Duncan. He is very polite and friendly here. He's still cold like most other origins, but he comes off well here. We can ask him some stuff about the Grey Wardens, and it's a good conversation. Of course we go around the palace and steal from all the barrels and chests, because what, are we not gonna do that? <laughs> yeah, right. So then we meet with a noble from House Dace. This is cool. He asks for our support for allowing surface dwarves to return to their caste, particularly nobles. If asked, he explains that it's mainly his wife's cause because they lost money in an expedition. If we agree to support him, another noble tells us we're a fool. She tells us we will end up paying the bill for the failed expedition, and that's Lord Dace's angle. This is cool for a number of reasons. One, we see firsthand how dwarven politics work. Lies, manipulation, honor, pride, all together. Then we have a number of ways to deal with this. We can support the cause, which this woman thinks will turn many against us. We can turn on Lord Dace when he asks for our opinion. Or we can confront him. If we confront him, we can either let him go, or challenge him in combat, resulting in his son dying. This is cool that we have so many options. So after being presented by our father, we're told to go get Trian. We get to his room and search it for anything to steal while he stands there in the center. He acts all arrogant again, and Balin tells us he plans to kill us, because everyone thinks the assembly will name me as the next king instead of him. Balin claims he heard Trian giving orders to his men, but I say we'll wait to see what Trian does. If he tries something, I can take him, but I won't act like he's guilty already. So we head into the deep roads the next morning, Balin calls Harriman cowardly, and we are told to retrieve the shield of Paragon Idukin. We fight spiders, deep stalkers, and darkspawn, meet with the two scouts, and reach our destination. We find a group of mercenaries or something, led by a guy with a sarcastically large nose trying to find the shield themselves, and they have an Idukin signet ring which they claim was given to them by one of Trian's men. This guy is not a good negotiator. We fight through them, enter the hall, solve an easy puzzle, reclaim the shield, leave, fight more darkspawn, load a ballista to clear the tunnel, head to the rendezvous, and find Trian already dead. Then everyone else hides for some reason as we kneel over the body. Our people come to see us and ask what happened. Harriman, while yes, working against the innocent person here, handles this as fairly as possible. We are arrested. We end up in a cell when Gorham comes to get us. We haven't been put on trial because Balin immediately made a notion to have us exiled, and half the assembly agreed, implying he had been making deals for months or even years. Gorham is sent to the surface, but we are sent to die in the deep roads. I might have volunteered for the Legion of the Dead, but the Grey Wardens are probably the better option anyway, so Gorham suggests we try to find them. We have a final scene with Harriman where he believes us if we tell him we're innocent. He vows not to let Balin take the throne. We head through the deep roads again and find Duncan, who is surprised to see us. He welcomes us to the Wardens, and we are off. This origin is really good, actually. You have a lot of different dialogue options, and even small side quests with several branches. You can make choices here that actually matter later, and you get a bunch of unique content when you return to Orzammar. My biggest complaint is that there is a lot of exposition that feels less natural than other origins. But a lot of what they explain is interesting, so... I haven't talked about the music before, but the Orzammar theme is awesome. It's exactly what I would expect for this society deep underground. It has a grandness to it, while also putting me in that headspace of... I am far away from the grass and sky. And I'll say again, this origin is probably the best for setting up the threat of the Darkspawn. They conquered the Deep Roads, and a Dwarf Noble has personal experience with how evil, destructive, and dangerous they are. So I think that's about it. Let me know what you guys think of this origin, and let me know what other Dragon Age videos you'd like to see. So that's it for now, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to comment and like. I'll see you later.